All right. Um, is there anything that you don't want me to talk about or ask you about? I'd, I'd prefer that you not ask me anything about <laughs> The, the allegations that I ate those nine children in Cincinnati back in 1999. Are you sure? Anything's open. Okay, cool, cool. All right. So I'm going to go ahead and do a three count and do a little intro and get this thing underway. Make sure we're recording. There we are. Get my notes out. I'm not usually this organized, so. All right. <laughs> I'm always disorganized. <laughs> I tried. I tried. I've been trying to organize more because I've been noticing a lot of stuff been slipping between my fingers from not keeping myself as organized. All right. So three, two, one. Thank you, ladies and gentlemen, for tuning in. This is Chris Rice Crypto, and I am with World Alternative Media. And today, I am joined by the infamous John McAfee, who needs no <laughs> actual introduction. So John, thanks for joining me today. I appreciate it. Well, thank you for asking me. It gives me something to do. How's your day going today? I just woke up. Just woke up, just like I did. So Absolutely. Starting a day off late. I guess we could call it West Coast time. <laughs> so now, John, you're, you're an antivirus software pioneer, um, one-time fugitive. You ran for president in 2016 as a member of the Libertarian Party and you've announced on June 3rd of this year that you're gonna be running for President of the United States again in 2020 on a pro cryptocurrency platform. You bet. Now, I've been seeing a lot of really interesting things, especially just over the past couple of days in your Twitter feed about basically talking to the effect of that you don't really feel like you would actually get voted in as president and you're actually not really encouraging anybody to vote at all, period. Can you elaborate a little bit more on that? Well, absolutely. Let's, let us be realistic. You know, and I certainly know, and everybody listening to you know, if they know anything about me, they know one thing. I could never be the president of the U.S. I would also make probably the worst president. No. Uh, why? Why can't I be? Because this country is ruled by two very powerful competing gangs, the Republicans and the Democrats, and they are gangs, my friend. Trust me. Um, they have taken our, our constitution and subverted it over the past 50 years into something that they can use as a tool against us, the people. Now, how do I know this? Listen, I ran in 2016. I will tell you about politics. It is lies, deceptions, dubious alliances, vote buying, underhanded tactics on into infinity. And I jumped into was engulfed by, and I swam through that for almost a year. I know politics, and I know that none of us want anything to do with it, nor with anybody who is involved in it. I'm telling you the truth from my heart. Now, I know I can't win, so why am I trying? I'm not trying to win. I'm with the Libertarian Party, or I've chosen to come back. I, I abandoned them because I'm not running anymore. However, that was because the first time, this is my first time in politics. So I looked around and said, so this is what you're doing? And I emulated that. In the end, I saw the incredible farce. However, for a year, I had the national stage. And on that time, my platform was, America, you are losing the cyber security race. And if you do, you will lose America. Now, in the remaining two years, what's happened? America has become the number one cyber security government. Instead of having our Office of Personnel Management hacked and every employee of the U.S. government stolen, which happened in 2015, for the past, ever since America existed and kept records, um, including our t top secret of um, the classified spies and things, which everybody now had public access to. How, who knows how many of those people disappeared into right. a country, try to do that today. And I, not, that I, not that my voice and my scolding did that, but I am one of the leading cybersecurity specialists in the world. So when I'm talking about that, you damn well better listen. And so America did. This time, it's going to be cryptocurrency. And here my platform is far more important and far greater. Why? Because if we do the right thing, which I'm not sure we will as crypto enthusiasts, we have for the first time 
a key to free us from our slavery. And if you don't think we're in slavery, think about your life. From our slavery into economic freedom. And economic freedom brings all other freedoms permissionless. Peer to peer, trustless, mathematics finally got its act together and said, here people, here's your gift. Far greater than the gift of fire that was given by the gods thousands of years ago. So this is why I want my children and grandchildren and yours and everyone's to grow up in a free fucking world. Free from a power that controls your economic means of acquiring and selling into a society where no one can either control or even know about it. Now, I'm going to get fierce resistance, obviously, from banks, from governments, from the people who use fiat to control us. Right. But I'm not backing down, and this will be my platform. And when someone asks me, like they did in the Libertarian Party during the first debate many times, I say, Mr. McAfee, what will you do on your first day in the Oval Office? And I'm just going to say, are you shitting me? You're asking an idiotic question in front of a world who's watching, who knows it's an idiotic question, and you're expecting them to join the party and vote? Wait the fuck up. I'm not going to be a first day in office. If you have a valid question to ask me, then please God do so. Trust me, you're going to see this. I'm not putting up any bullshit during this. And every question, Mr. Mackey, what do you think the best thing to do about the Middle East is? I'm going to go, how many of you actually speak Farsi or Arabic? How many of you truly understand the history and current conditions of their religion, their culture, their economy, their way of living? None of you. Then right. what the fuck business do we have making any decisions about what to do? It's not our fucking problem. Neither is it through our arrogance a need to go fix a problem we don't understand. I don't care what you, what you talk about. I'm going to bring it back to because how can we enslaved people in this country, fed pablum, disinformation, propaganda, which we are willingly eating, do anything about this in any case, bring it home. We must free ourselves first. And how? Through the blockchain. No, this is the only thing. You understand? I'm sorry. I was, I was acting on stage. So that. <laughs> no, I feel you. It's, it's all good. I appreciate it. So you, you had mentioned something. Stop next time. Are you going to be running with the Libertarian Party this time around, or are you creating? Yeah, because because they've already got they've already got ballot access in all fifty states and the power to get on national television. So, um, which I got into last time. But here's the issue: no matter what I say, the Libertarian leadership cannot stop me, provided. I have enough chits in that little bottle where after every convention they say, we want to see McAfee in the next debate. If my chits count up enough, I'm in. I don't care what I want to say or what you want to think about it. Fuck you. That is now my power. Do you understand? I have stepped out of the arena, out of the rule book, out of the fucking game, and using my fundamental rights. Do I have the support? Yes. Then fuck you. I had the support last time. I promise you. I will have this quote this time. Glad to hear it. Actually, I've interviewed Adam Kokesh, who's another one of the... Oh, no, I don't. No, there's a nice guy. He said he endorsed you last time around in 2016. And I guess uh, this time around, you guys, if you're going to run with the Libertarian Party, you guys would be competing against each other this time. But The only thing I have to do to run with the Libertarian Party is rejoin the party for 25 bucks. That's all I got to do. From there, I, had saw, I saw something about a disagreement with the Libertarian Party um, and where you were talking about possibly running with the Cyber Party. You know, I looked at that. Too fucking expensive. Do you realize if I don't want folks, I don't have to spend what 99% of all campaigns go to getting votes. Uh, billboards, signs in everybody's yard, local radio station spots. That's where all the money goes. I'm not right. spending a penny because I don't want anybody's vote anyway. So I will be the most, I'll be the cheapest campaign in American presidential history. That itself would be worthy of note. <laughs> so now you're going to be running on a completely pro crypto, pro blockchain platform? That's my only platform. I'm if you to want to talk about something else, I will bring it back to that, I promise you. 
So anything anybody asks you is going to somehow bring it all back. Not somehow. You, know, you ask me, ask me, ask me a random fucking question. I'll tell you how to answer. Yeah, well, what would you do in the European with the European Union with what's going on with Brexit and all the different situations regarding Italy and situations like that? My answer is this: How many of you actually visited any part of Europe and spent any time there? Have you lived there? Again, people, you're asking me questions that you have no power, even if I gave you the answer, to implement. You are in a cage. If you, if you don't think in a cage, let me ask you this. You're the average American, reasonably successful, meaning you work for a company. Five days a week, you're committed to and from. You have enough time to eat, eat your food, go to bed. If you're not too fucking tired, you may get, you may get some lovemaking, and you do it again five days a week. For how long? 40 fucking years. I ask you this then. If you are free, quit your job right now. Right now. Right. Can you? No. Your mortgage, they will repossess your house, your cars. Your kids won't be able to go to private school. You're out in the fucking streets. Oh, no, you can't. What is the definition of slavery? The inability to activate free fucking will. And then what's crazy about that is like Kanye West, a lot of people were giving him a lot of slack about talking about how we're still in slavery, but what you're saying actually explains what he was saying very well, that we are still, we're in a monetary slavery system. And you just can't yes, I married to a black woman where the subject of slavery is very fucking fine. And she's the first to say, we're worse slaves now. Yeah. Period. We are worse slaves now. And we are... So if you are a slave, what is the sense of you asking me what I would do when I'm a slave too? So please God, right. get us out of the fucking prison, then let's talk about what to do. And I promise you, your first order of business is not going to be the European Union. It's going to be right here, right now, with the madness that we are living in. And if you fix that and you have time for that, then ask me. That'll be 50 years. I think a lot of people don't take that sociological, cultural aspect into, into play. When, Like what you said, you, you speak <laughs> well, have, you been, have you been in Europe? Have you been to these countries? Have you experienced what these people are experiencing? Yes. yes. And a lot of times, yes, I have. No. Most of them. In fact, I've been in jail in seven of them. That really gets you to know the culture. So, so I'm sure. Uh, yeah. Pardon? I'm definitely sure that would get you to know the culture because that's where you're seeing the realness of people. Yes, and the people in the, their country have been put down, and maybe it's because they robbed their liquor store. I don't fucking know. Still, okay. So they're going to tell you stories you'll never read in the newspaper and seldom hear from a politician, no matter how drunk they are, and never hear from the man on the street because they don't know them. True. No, you're right. Another thing I wanted to ask you about was um, you were talking about in your Malta, one of your Malta speeches, not the keynote speech, but when you were speaking, you were talking about the irony of us, the crypto enthusiasts, basically asking our government permission <laughs> to use a permissionless system that, so that we can trust an untrustworthy entity. Uh, since we're really running on a pro cryptocurrency platform, I'm just curious, like, I know you're anti-regulation. Are you going to be pushing that element? Oh, hell yes. Here's, here's why it's happening now. We're in the bottom of a horrible bear market. We're looking for any kind of solution to save our monetary ass. Even, please God, governments save us. Why do you think we're so low? Who do you think pushed us down here? Please God, this is manipulation at its highest point. Yeah. Not only that, when you're at the fucking bottom, and maybe we as government come in and help you. Are you going to take it? Fuck yes. Not if I'm on board, though. I ain't going, and I'm going to be tying that fucking ship to the dock with chains. It ain't going nowhere. I promise you. As you said, and those were my exact words, by the way. Okay. Early, not early. Uh, yeah. that. What, what, is, what is crypto? What's the blockchain? It creates a peer-to-peer, -peer, trustless, and permissionless system. Do you see the beauty in that? We don't have to trust each other because we can't. We're fucking human beings. We're good, we're bad. We love, we hate. We're gentle and we're hostile. Fuck me. So no, we don't have to trust us anymore. It is perfect as long as we remain permissionless. And we can be if we don't 
voluntarily give permission to the government, which we're trying to get fucking away from. Please, people, see the idiocy of this. No, we are permissionless as long as we refuse to do it. The government says, well, we're going to do our own cryptocurrency. Well, fuck me, please go ahead. You think we're going to use it? No, we're not with our business. They don't understand this. They're going to say, well, you have to use it. Well, I'm sorry, we're not distributing exchanges now. Good fucking luck. And on top of that, we've got people like Skycoin developing an alternative to the fucking internet, at least for cryptocurrencies. They say we can replace the internet. Nah. I don't think so. I doubt it. However, for us, it is a completely traceless, distributed mesh network that goddamn it, we can, can we can get into and access the exchange, the distributed exchanges and each other with impunity. So good God, we've got Skycoin, distributed systems, and our willingness not to give up. I'm begging you people, don't give up and do not accept the regulations. If we need them, we will fucking implement them ourselves. Please, God, see this. I am begging you. You have, for the first time in human history, an ability to take control of your own life and be a free individual. Don't fuck this up. Don't let your greed destroy the finest and greatest opportunity that has yet been offered to mankind. Thank you for that. It's definitely I'm important to shut up and off on these rants. No, no, I appreciate the rants. I mean, because these are things that I think people need to hear. I mean, people people think of you as a crazy individual. You can spout some wisdom. I think it's stuff that people need to pay attention to because you are a wise man. You've been through a lot. Uh, just just looking at your bio, you've been through a great deal. So. Anything I, would, I would recommend the following. I do it's not a think that insanity cannot bring wisdom. You would be wrong. <laughs> I just think it's My, ironic. What is insanity? It is stepping outside of the world and seeing it different from everybody else. That's insane. Well, you don't do the same thing we do. You're crazy. Of course I'm crazy. I have abandoned every single aspect of this society that has been pressed upon us by our parents, our teachers, our jobs, our governments. No, I'm out here. And I'm seeing something you don't see, and I wish the fuck you could. So yes, I'm crazy by every definition of the word. But don't think that did not give me knowledge and freedom. But people, I mean, so we're, we're both in North Carolina right now, and we had some famous people by the name of the Wright brothers that did some awesome things. Why don't you fly like birds? Right, dude, don't That's you think crazy. people thought they were crazy? <laughs> they did indeed. People, I'm pretty sure, <laughs> thought that Nikolai Tesla was crazy. <laughs> so I think, I think the innovators and the traders. <laughs> they just thought he was disseminating false information, right? Same thing. But yes, he did the same thing. He stepped out and said, listen. I agree. We've got science and mathematics that loves our own fucking ears, eyes, and brain to observe disconnected from the crazy mental structure that society has implanted within you. Take that structure off. Take a look. It's nothing like what they told you, even though you're seeing it that way now. It's almost like some fucking science fiction movie where they put something in your brain. Turn a switch and suddenly you're seeing an alternate reality, which is the reality they want you to see. Yeah, and we, we've been conditioned this way. I'm sorry? We've been conditioned this way. And something that I encourage people to do is to question everything and to use critical thinking. Because just because somebody says it's true does not make it true. <laughs> yeah. you know, I'm finding that more and more today than ever. You know, that a lot of the things that we have been taught in school, a lot of the history of humankind, just is, there's something that's not right. There's something that's being hidden, and there's, yeah. there's, there's not allowing yeah. us to know that information. And I'm not really sure what the purpose is, but I don't really think that it's cool, personally. No. Well, here's something. P.T. Barnum said that if the overwhelming majority of people believe something, it is absolutely false. I have discovered that to be absolutely true, what he said. Believe me, if the overwhelming majority absolutely know something is true, forget, forget that. We know that's false. Let's move on. It's a fact. It's a, look, at, look at it. Look at what people are just hounding out on Twitter and Facebook and, and Instagram about 
God knows what. Yes, everybody's going, yes, yes. Well, if everybody's saying yes, I promise you it's no. This is how world the world works. I don't know why. I think it, well, I have a, I have a suspicion. It's because of the true insanity that exists in our society. Not the insanity that is measured by, you see something no one in the world does, you must be crazy. But the insanity measured by a society that is controlled by a mindset which is human. We love, we hate. We are generous, we're greedy. We are open and we're jealous. We are a mixed fucking bag, so you think we can create the truth? No, we've got the truth that's been fought over by these opposing forces and whoever wins, which is generally determined by what the general public believes because they go, see, everybody agrees with me, I must be right. Then the good side gives up or the bad side gives up. And that's where we're living. So of course, of course, if the majority believes something, it has to be wrong. Good God almighty, see the truth of that. It's ironic. This whole thing is ironic. <laughs> is it not? It totally is. And by um, the way, when I know Scotch, we must we must desist. All right. I will drink slowly, my friend. Another thing I want to ask you regarding the Malta issue, which kind of goes into what we were talking about with like changing the world. Um, you had mentioned something, uh, you were doing a keynote speech where you looked like you were talking to a room of wealth. You had actually mentioned. Oh, yes, I was talking. I was talking to probably the most, the most wealthy room in the world at that moment. You, you, I think the comment that you made was more money than the bank of. Yeah, I mean, these were, these were people who were the original Bitcoin developers who had $5 billion. They were, they were the European financiers that were there trying to figure out how to stop it. No, that room, listen to God, if they'd shaken out just their right pants pocket, you know, we could have all retired. That was all of us normal people. So no, yes, a super rich group of people. I'm sorry for. No, no, it's great. I mean, yeah, but it was a super great rich group. Of, uh, it was a super rich group of people. And during your keynote speech, you took the time to tell people that those individuals in particular, that they needed to dig in their pocket basically and figure out what they could spare because we need to take this technology of cryptocurrency and blockchain and change the world for our, our children and our grandchildren. And there's something that I talk about called practice change, which is basically you as an individual, me as an individual, being the change that I want to see in this world. So I really took to what you said, and I want to ask if you can elaborate on not just the monetary aspects, but what are some of the things that you would like to see change in this world for your children and grandchildren and for our, for our future generations to come? Okay, so five years in Belize, I lived in the jungle part-time. Now, when I first moved to Belize, I have, I have an honorary doctorate, so they call me Dr. McAfee, right? But it's a doctor of science, means nothing. <coughs> when I moved into the jungle, everybody knew me as Dr. McAfee. <laughs> so mothers would bring their children, babies, to, to my compound and say, what's wrong with my baby? Swollen belly, losing hair, lot skin, starving. I say, your child is starving. But no, she eats. What does she eat? The pious. For how long has she had just the pious? A few months. You can't exist on the pious. So I would take that mother and child, I'd take one of my steps, send it to the dry goods store, get a year's supply of dried beans, rice, dried meats and things they can fucking live on. So this kept happening. And by the way, two months later, that same mother would bring a, a very happy, healthy, smiling baby, except still missing the hair. Okay, growing back, going, thank you so much. For what? For what? For, for stepping in? Which is why, by the way, I got into trouble in Belize. Who could not fucking step in? And I did. You know, I started, don't, I, I, you know, I built lunch rooms, police stations for villages that had none, uh, and supplied them all with food so the kids at least once a day could have a goddamn meal. So I, anyways, having seen this, I'm telling these people who sit comfortably at home and donate a half million dollars to United Way every year, and they feel fucking comfortable. No. Get out there and see it yourself. You that gives a half million dollars to United Way, do you also give any money to the poor beggar who says, can you spare a quarter, even though he's probably lying and was gonna buy booze? You still don't? So, no, that's what I said. And please God, do not any of you out there think that I did this because I'm a good man, my character is different, I'm, no, bullshit. 
It's because I'm 70 fucking three. And I see my end creeping and peeking at me over the fucking horizon. I don't have time anymore for bullshit. That part's over. That's over. But I do have children, grandchildren, and so, so do you. And if that's not your prime priority, then you have, I don't know what has happened. Something's wrong with your mind because that is our fucking purpose as parents, caretakers for this fucking planet to pass on to our children something better and something worse, which has been happening for four generations. Way, way too long. It's been happening way too long. We definitely need to correct ourselves and, and take care of our planet. Indeed. Um, now, to get Let's off... Two more questions, my friend. We got started a little bit late. Okay, I apologize. Um, let me ask you real quick about the Declaration of Currency Independence. Are you still doing that? You know, that was done by one of my employees not only working here, to be frank with you. Okay. I let everybody get their pet project. I really don't know. That's my frank answer. I will, I'll, when I get, I'm in the middle of all kinds of problems now, which is, I guess, what I've always been in all my life, but nevertheless, I will, I will deal with it soon and tell you. The McAfee Alliance, is that something that you're working with? Hansel? Yes, that is the other thing as well. See, here's what happened. We had, we had Jimmy Watson who taken over as CEO four months ago. He has a medical problem. He had a stroke and, and he's not capable now of performing that function. I've left him entirely alone <laughs> during this time. You have no idea how difficult it is to unravel what, is, what has been happening. And so, again, sir, I'll have to say, I don't know. And if, you, if, you, if, you're, if your watchers go, what kind of man are you? You're running a company, you've done all shit. Well, that's the facts. I'm sorry. Here we are. I took over normally just yesterday. Just yesterday. Yeah, Jimmy told me a little bit, didn't tell me all the specifics, but he told me he was taking a little time off and got me connected with your wife, which is how I got the interview set up. But yeah. I appreciate that. And I guess one last thing that I wanted to ask you was, um, well, two last things. One which is, uh, I wanted to ask you if you've been researching like any alternate sites, like uh, alternate sites versus Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, stuff like BitTube and Steemit. Are you promoting or are you behind any of those kind of projects? I, it, I spend my life on the dark net. Why? That's where everything begins. That's where Bitcoin began in earnest. They grab it and go, hey, God damn, we can use this. Now, I don't care if they were selling hitmen or drugs or prostitution or, or uh, illegal rhino horns or prostitutes from, from Taiwan, Taiwan. I don't care. I'm sorry. What I care about is that it started there. And people would see how easy it is. For the, no, we had no more. We had no more criminal activity on the dark net when they adopted Bitcoin. You think they were doing? We're not doing the same thing on the dollar, the yen, the euro. Wake up! No. So when I say I don't care, that doesn't mean my heart doesn't go out. It means that in the question that you asked, it does not matter. So the dark web, Bitcoin started there. It didn't come out for a couple of years. When it did, it came out with a flourish. The dark web is the incubator for our currencies, our systems, our platforms. Wake up. So now, I spend my time there. And I, why did I bet the $2 million or $1 million Bitcoin at the end of 2020, which is two years away? Because I hang out on the fucking dark web. I promise you, the plans that are happening there, it's going to be a million dollars. I can't lose. So other than that, I, don't, I spend time on Twitter because that keeps me busy. I have people who help me and, and sometimes answer for me. And I have a life. And I'm 73. I should have been retired and fishing out here on this beautiful water instead of sitting here talking to you. Right. Yeah. So this is the reality of Team McAfee. I'm back in charge. But I'm giving you the truth of who I am. You asked me a question, so frankly, I didn't, I didn't try to snow you all over that. No, I said, fuck, I don't know. And I won't know until I dig into it. And I appreciate you being honest and being straight. That's, that's exactly what we need in the world today. And if you don't know, you just don't know. So, well, the other thing is, if you're not honest, God damn, trying to keep up with your lies will consume your entire intellectual capacity. I have no more time for that. I'd rather say that on an important subject, what will you do with this important thing that you created? I don't fucking know. I haven't looked at it yet. End of story. Don't like it? I'm sorry, it's the truth. People don't generally like the truth, and yet when they buy...